Let's spend a few minutes talking about the dishonest manager. For now, we're going to read Luke 16, verses 1 through 8. And he also said to his disciples, There was a certain rich man who had a steward, and an accusation was brought to him that this man was wasting his goods. So he called him and he said to him, What is this I hear about you? Give an account of your stewardship, for you can no longer be stored. Then the steward said within himself, What shall I do? For my master is making this or taking the stewardship away from me. I cannot dig. I'm ashamed to beg. I have resolved what to do, that when I am put out of the stewardship, they may receive me into their houses. So he called every one of his master's debtors to him, and he said to the first, How much do you owe my master? And he said, A hundred measures of oil. So he said to him, Take your bill and sit down quickly and write fifty. He said to another, How much do you owe? And he said, A hundred measures of wheat. And he said to him, Take your bill, write eighty. So the master commended the unjust steward because he had dealt shrewdly. For the sons of this world are more shrewd in their generation than the sons of light. <clears throat> now I want you to note that he was unjust, this steward. Uh, parable refers to him that. Jesus refers him to that, as to, to him as that. And the behavior is not right. It's not correct. In, in the verses we've read so far, we're just observing this person's behavior. We're, we're not yet addressing or learning what Jesus wants us to do or to learn from the parable. <clears throat> now, what we've read so far, the master commended him for his shrewdness. And this is the master whom he had wronged. He wasn't saying what the guy did was right. He wasn't even saying he was happy about what he had done. You know, the guy's being fired. Obviously, he's not happy. But he's acknowledging that it was shrewd, wise, or prudent, the plans he was making. <clears throat> now, verse 9 begins what we're to learn from this parable, what, what we're to learn from what an unjust man did here. Let's see what Jesus says. And I say to you, make friends of yourselves by unrighteous mammon, that when you fail, they may receive you into an everlasting home. He was faithful in what is least is faithful also in much. He was unjust in what is least is unjust also in much. Therefore, if you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? If you've not been faithful in what is another man's, who will give you what is your own? No servant can serve two masters. Either he'll hate the one and love the other, else he will be loyal to one and despise the other. You can't serve God and mammon. <clears throat> so let's see what we're to learn from this. Jesus' point, he says, make friends for yourselves by unrighteous mammon. What he means by that phrase is earthly possessions. Simply make friends for yourselves with earthly possessions that when you fail is the word he used it means to die to pass away that when you die you may be received in everlasting homes heaven so he's comparing this to this earthly man preparing for a home later as us now preparing for a heavenly home later that's jesus point so unrighteous mammon refers to the money or uh, not that is not to be trusted in so refers to mammon or money. Mammon means money that's not to be trusted in. It's the opposite of true riches. This is the earthly riches. It's, it has a deceitful nature. This unrighteous mammon has a deceitful nature that'll fool you. And it doesn't refer at all to the manner in which we earn it. And that's what kind of fools us as we listen to this parable. We assume meaning uh, earned in some unrighteous way, but it doesn't mean that at all. It's the way the nature of the money is deceitful and unrighteous. We're not copying the unrighteous behavior of that man. So it's neat, before we wrap up, in the few following verses, the Pharisees who love money derided Jesus for what he taught about using your mammon uh, in such a way to help others. He goes on to teach, Jesus does, that the kingdom of God is of utmost importance. And then he teaches that their love of money and their adulterous ways uh, are an abomination to God. And that part kind of fools us because that one verse about marriage, divorce, and remarriage there seems to be out of context. But it seems he is continuing or hammering the Pharisees, you're ungodly, your money, you're ungodly in your marriage relationships. And we miss the continuity that that chapter goes right on. And uh, he finishes Luke with the account of the rich man and Lazarus. And that's an example of... Uh, uh, exactly what he was talking about, an unrighteous mammon. He gives an example 
of what the Pharisees had just heard and derided about using your mammon for later on, a man like them who had wealth uh, was not willing to help others who could not return favors or do things for him. They had no interest in helping someone who couldn't return something to him. Poor man in this account that we do not have time to read just wanted crumbs from his table that he never received, and that rich man ended up in torments. And you can stay to that on your own at the end of Luke 16, or I'm sure we'll have a talk on it sometime if, if we haven't already. So the rich man did not use his unrighteous mammon to make friends for the afterlife in the end of Luke 16. And what Jesus pointed that parable was, use your worldly goods, the unrighteous mammon you have now, so that you may be received into heaven when you die.